So one of the problems for your homework is to calculate the uh, moment of inertia of kind of an odd looking object that has uh, related by some mathematical relationship. Um, let's see if I can sketch it out here real quickly. It, it basically is bounded by two lines. Uh, the upper line is some function of y equals h, I think, uh, some height, and then on the bottom by some parabola. Uh, this should come down to zero here. I'm just trying to sketch it out a little bit. So uh, to make this the most general solution I can, uh, I'm going to write this as y equals b x squared, where because b is the everyone's number, it might be different, and also um, how long this is, uh, I'm going to write that as h. So this is going to be the point h, and this is the point 0. This is along the y-axis and along the x-axis. And the question specifically asks, what is the moment of inertia about the y-axis? So the moment of inertia about the y-axis is um, basically a, a sum of all of the pieces of mass, all of the little chunks of mass, that are some distance y away from uh, from the centerpiece, right? I mean, there's some, as you move along, you are not some distance y, actually. It's a distance of, of x. So what we want to know is we want to sum up over all these, these distances r squared uh, times some differential mass, right? This is exactly what we did in class when we were doing the problem with the rod. Uh, but now the differential masses in this situation are a little bit different, and, and this is why I wanted to make this video. It's, it's, it could look quite a bit different than what we did in class. Um, here, what we're interested in is little tiny chunks, right? We still want a differential mass, but now these differential masses are a little bit different. Uh, the rods that we used in class for uh, was, we assumed, was a, a thin rod that didn't have a lot of uh, really uh, interesting uh, width dimensions, but these differential masses are these little tiny chunks. Each of these little slices represents some differential chunk of mass, some thin strip of mass. And that mass has dimensions. And whereas the rod, we only were worried about linear mass density, in this situation we need to worry about uh, something that has surface area density. So um, this differential mass we're going to relate that, the, the ratio of the differential mass in this situation divided by its differential area, and I'll explain more about what that is in a minute, that's going to equal some type of uh, surface density for the, the two things. So we have whatever the mass of this little slice of stuff is, and it's proportional to the uh, differential area that is comprised of this strip by some by some con by some other constant, right? This is there. It's a constant uh, medium. It doesn't change. The density doesn't change with position, and so we can write that ratio as something uh, sigma. In this case, uh, we also can relate sigma to the total mass, since it's a uniform density. The total mass divided by the total area also has the same ratio of stuff. And and we're told in the problem what the total mass of the object is. I'm not going to include that number at this time, but that's. Um, useful stuff. So this is different than the problem we did in class. As you recall the problem in class we associated differential mass um, with some linear mass density which we called lambda and divided dm by just uh, some quantity of dx or dy. So here we're looking at dA. So what is dA? Well dA is the area of this little tiny strip of stuff um, which might seem confusing, right? Well what, what is the dimensions of that? It, it's two different things multiplied by one another. Um, here we have a differential in x, right? So um, this little slice here is actually in the direction of x, right? This little piece is some dx times its length, the length of this strip, which is actually equal to whatever, um, the length of that strip is actually um, the, the value of this line right, y equals h minus the value of this line, which was y equals bx squared. So we can actually uh, fill that in, right, that, that differential area, if we want to describe this dm as being equal to sigma times dA, that differential area is equal to the width of that strip, which is dx, times the length of that strip, which is always going to be equal, the length of that strip is equal to some value of y, but a very special value of y, depending on where it's located along that strip. Um, it's always going to be equal to, uh, at one end will be h, and the other end will be at bx squared. 
So we can literally write down that length of that strip, right? We're doing the top minus the bottom. And that's going to give us the length of the strip. So as x gets to be larger and larger out here, where um, the quantity of bx squared will equal h, then that strip has no length anymore. So that, this goes to zero at that point. Um, and we're going to ask about this range, right? We actually want to sum up over all the strips. The strips on this side, uh, in between, as it gets closer to the middle, all of these different strips, right? Um, each one we're going to add up a little bit of chunk. And so the, the r for these, each of these chunks is going to be the distance that this strip is from the y-axis. And that distance happens to be x. So as we start to plug in these relationships into our equation for the moment of inertia um, about y, we see that we're going to have, we're, we're interested in the distance from the x-axis, which is equal to x. So r squared is x squared. dm is equal to sigma times h minus bx squared dx. And we're going to integrate all of this from the limits. Now we can do a couple of different things. Um, the limits, the, the easiest limits to do here are simply to evaluate it from the two limits, right? The extreme values of x and or the extreme values of x. And what is the extreme values of x? Well, the extreme values of x are when x is equal to plus or minus uh, this value at the maximum, right? When x, sorry, I should write, x is equal to y divided by b, the square root of that, right? That's what x is equal to. Um, but y is going to go from, y has a maximum value of h. So x is equal to the square root of h over b, and that actually ranged from negative x. We can see over here that this is going to go from negative x, or negative h, the square root of h over b, to a positive square root of h over b. Okay, so that's our, the limits of x are from negative square root of h over b to positive square root of h over b, because those are the limits that our, our little mass is located on, right? That's the where, where it's located between. So that gives us this pretty complicated form that's still not even finished yet. Um, we also need to worry about sigma. And sigma, um, to write each of these out explicitly, uh, we're going to have x squared times h, which is just some constant, minus b, which is some constant, times x squared, which is, we're going to be integrating over that, uh, times sigma, which we said is equal to the mass over the area, times dx. I just moved the sigma over here. It, you can, since we're all only multiplying those things, as long as it's inside this integral, it's not a problem. Um, but the value of the area is something that we still need to be able to figure out. We need to figure out what the area of this object is, right, which is a step we need to take. Um, and what we're told what the mass is. So these two aren't things that we need to integrate over. So we can pull those out in front. So um, we get mass over the area. From the limits of x, and we have x squared times h minus bx squared dx. Um, in the next video, I'll kind of demonstrate a little bit how to how we're going to solve a. It's very very similar. Um, basically, we've already done we've already found out what the area is um, by by looking at kind of this piece right here and, and determining what the size of those strips are. Um, but in terms of evaluating this integral. Um, it's, it may look complicated, but this should be very straightforward. You've done dozens of integrals like this in your calculus class. We, um, the thing that I would probably suggest doing is distributing this x squared into each of these terms. That'll give us hx squared as the first term minus bx to the fourth. And then as we evaluate this, we're just, it's simply a polynomial then. We need to make sure that we keep track of our, our values. And when we start plugging in these square roots of h over b, that, um, that we look carefully, right? That, that we're we're being very careful with our pluses, pluses, with our pluses and minuses, uh, so that we don't make any uh, careless mistakes. Uh, many of you will probably plug in the numbers for these right away, and that's fine as long as you hold sufficient number of digits in your calculator when doing that calculation. All right? We'll come back in just a second and talk about the area.